the development of the coast.
Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which is your keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. So circumcised the flesh of the foreskin, and shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. He that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man in your generations. He that is born in the house, or bought with money, of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house, and he that is bought without money, must needs to be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh which foreskin is not circumcised, thou shalt be cut off. That soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. He said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? Abraham said unto God, All that Ishmael may live before might live before thee. God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son in thee. Thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my cousin covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. My covenant will I establish with Isaac, and Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. Appreciate your patience this evening. Chapter 18. The Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. He sat in the tent of the tent or in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And he saw that he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. He said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. I will fetch a morsel of bread and will comfort you your hearts that after that you shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent of the Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd, fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it to a young man, and he hasted to dress it. He took butter and milk from the calf which he had dressed and said before them, he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And he ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Appreciate your patience once again. Praise the Lord. I wanted to just briefly, if I could, talk to us a little bit this evening about the promises of God. And uh, 
I know that we have heard this portion of scripture. Some of us have heard it many times in our lifetime. But nevertheless, every now and then, we need to go back and we need to look again. As I read to you, Abraham at the time, who was Abram, was 75 years old. The Lord told him to go out from among his people, the land that he would show him. God promised him at that time, he said, I will make of you many nations. All the families of the world will be blessed through your seed. And we find that at 99 years old, 24 years had come and gone. And the Lord began to come back and remind Abram of what he had said. Now in that time, Abram began to get a little older and Sarai Sarah came to him. Being in the old days, she offered a handmaid to him that he might have seen. Him. So he offered a slave to him. And she thought within herself and it expressed that when she would go to bear the child, she said, in my lap, basically, we'll do this our way. But God does not need mine your help. The only thing that began to happen was a division was created. Even today, that division is still royally overseas. And truly, the, the boy that was born in Ishmael, just as the word of the Lord spoke, even today he is a wild man. His hands against his neighbor roundabout. But after Abram had tried it that way, God came back to him and said, uh, I'm going to change your name. No more you're going to be Abram, but now you're going to be Abraham. I wonder how many times on the journey that Abram's faith was tested and tried in what the Lord had told him he was going to do. I wonder how many times that uh, it was brought back to his memory, the promise that God had made. Maybe at time to time, as you and I might be getting busy with life, and from time to time, maybe we're not focused on that promise all the time, and our mind will drift away from it. And then eventually it'll come back to us, what the Lord had promised. But the one thing about it is, 24 years of time, God had never forgotten what He had promised to Abraham. And sometimes you wonder, why would it be? Why would the Lord God wait so long to do this? You see, sometimes God likes to move in a way that it removes any shadow of doubt that it had to be God that did it. This 99 year old man sitting and looking at a hundred year milestone just ahead of him. Yeah. And God began to come down to him. And he began to talk with him and began to tell him what he was going to do. Abraham began to say, well, what about my son Ishmael? And look at him. Once again, God did not have that plan for him. He said in Sarah, I'm going to do this through Sarah. This 90-year-old woman, Lord, yes, do this one. That even the, the man of the wife, uh, as it is with women, but cease with her. No way that it could be impossible. God said through Sarah. Because God said through Sarah, it 
had the kind of that 90 year old woman. Praise the Lord. People look down nowadays and they, some will try to say, well, they got the years wrong, they got the ages wrong. But I'm going to tell you when the Bible said 99, Abraham was 99. Right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. It said 90, so I was 90 years old. Praise the Lord. When God began to say it had to come into existence, Abraham began to laugh. Did some people begin to think about this ever? They get kind of funny. Then God began to tell him, I want you to name this boy when he gets here, I want you to name him Isaac. I want you to call him laughter. And we have a time to call him by name. You're reminded of the promise that I gave you that was so great that it made you laugh to even think that I was able to do this. Time began to roll along and the Lord began to call the two angels. The two angels were going to go on down into Sodom and Gomorrah and check out the filthiness down in that land. But the Lord began to talk to Abraham again. He said, where is Sarah and I wife? He knew where she was. But he began to bring it back up and he said, I will certainly return unto you according to the time of life. Nine months down the way, the time that it takes, your wife is going to have a son. Not only would it be through Sarah, but it couldn't be a girl, because God said she'll have a son. And when God said it to be a son, it had to be a son. And glory to God, in a matter of time, that God has spoken it to me, it came to be exactly that way. But she began to lie within the tent away, out of earshot, and the Lord began to say, why did she lie? I tell you why she lied, because the promise was so unbelievable that it would sound silly to anybody to even try to understand why God, why He would do it this way, and could He do it this way? And then God began to answer back and begin to say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, we begin to pray today. Talk with the Lord just a little bit. And I, I begin to think about how many times that the Lord has they let different promises all through this church house. Different things that God has said that He would do. Things that maybe, even maybe today, earlier today, some of you might not even thought about it, but perhaps at the preaching of the Word, that things begin to come back to your remembrance that God had told you that He would do. Praise the Lord. But all this time, God never forgot the promise that He made you. And even if He has to do and work through the unbelievable and the absolute impossible, God will take the impossible and make a possibility. He'll turn it to reality. I began to talk to the Lord and I was reminded how that uh, David began to have to encourage himself in the Lord, his God. I began to talk to the Lord this way. Not even though I may be weak, it doesn't change what you are and who you are. Lord, even though along the way I be weak, I stumble, I fall, I make shipwreck, that does not change your power one bit. It doesn't change your ability at all. You're still God. In the good, in the bad, in the hard, in the lean times, in the times of plenty, God, you're still able to do anything that your children have need of. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I heard people mention that at times you'll say God can do anything that you have need of. And somebody said, well, he can't lie and he can't fail. Does anybody here need him to lie? Does anybody need him to fail? I said God can do anything that you have need of. And more than that, when God speaks a word, it has to be the way God said it would be. And then here comes the devil and he gets up in your face and he begins to speak down and unbelief. I didn't come and bring you down and unbelief tonight. I began to come tonight and remind you of the God that you serve. That God and moved upon a 90 year old woman and gave her that child that she brought forth. Mm -hmm. And when she brought forth her child, what was it? A little boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lord, oh, I love it. We'll begin to pass. And we'll begin to look and see that old woman sitting there rocking that little newborn baby. 
they probably would smile and laugh too. And say, have you ever heard of such a thing even happen? But ain't that the way that God likes to move? Don't He like to move in a way that He would be glory? Don't He like to move and do things and work in time that people would begin to acknowledge that God had done something special here? Oh, if you can do it, go ahead and do it. If you can fix your problem, go ahead and fix it. But to see, the thing is, that's why it's your problem. For you, it's a problem. You cannot fix it. But for God, when He says, I will, it's as good as done. Amen. And at a hundred years old, praise the Lord, here comes this hundred year old man, and they laid this little newborn baby in his arms. Praise the Lord. Do you know what they laid over in his arm? The promise of God. He held and he handled the promise that God had given unto him. Amen. He might have took 25 years in the making all of the good things of God. Sometimes they're a long time in the making, but when they come, it's worth every hour, every minute, every day, every week, every month, every year. It's worth it all when you get the promise and you hold that promise in your hand. Well, uh, you've got to have the kind of faith that is the substance of things hoped for. What does it mean? It is what comprises that. It's that thing that you're hoping for. That's what makes it real. This this pulpit, this, this little table you're looking at, this this desk up here. I thought it, it is the, the substance of this is wood. That's the substance that makes it what it is. Well, that thing that you want from the Lord. Your faith is what makes it real. Your faith in God. Your faith in trusting in the promise of God. You're trying to hold, even when the enemy wants to rip it away from your heart and out of your mind. Say, God told me. And if God said it, it's got to be devil. Go find somewhere else to lay down. Hmm? Oh, we said and we wonder how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. There's some things that come out of your way He's not intended for us to do. He's intended for us to lean upon the Lord and thereby increase our faith and watch Him do it. Praise the Lord. Do you still believe in God? Hmm? Well, what about when what you ask before it seems like it moves further away? What you're seeking for seems like you just you start out praying and you, you begin to ask and it just seems like it gets further out of reach. What about that thing that the Lord has told you that He's going to do? Anybody got one of the promises? Anybody have a promise? Anybody have a promise? Yeah. I've had people just make promises to me. And when did they fail? They didn't keep their promise. Yeah. Don't put your confidence in me. Don't put your confidence in princes. But put your trust in God. Amen. Hold on to that promise that the Lord has made you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. In that moment that the little old man began to hold that baby in his arms, it didn't matter that he's a hundred years older than him. Oh, he loved that just as much as he would if he'd been a young man. Probably a little bit more because he was a child of his old age. Hmm? Praise the Lord. What happened when man began to try to do it? Mistakes were made. The child of bondage was born. God's promises don't come through bondage. God's promises don't come through sin. Bondage being an image of sin. God, He don't work through sin. He works through cleanliness. He works through goodliness. God works something out for you. He'll work it out righteously. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Lord God. Oh, I've seen it at time. Uh, I, I thought it was time needing the Lord to move for us uh, in, a, in, a, in the job that we had. And I, I thought the Lord moved and, and I got a promotion, but He didn't fire the one that was ahead of me that had that post. But they got a different job and the Lord blessed them and then He blessed me and moved me up. That's how God will work. He will move for me and you. He will keep His word and His promise that He made to us. Right. Oh, if you're not careful, 
All will come to the enemy here say, just do this. Just, just, just do it this way. What happens when we begin to put our hand into the midst of it? I'm sure I'm not the only one that's ever done that. What happened? Let me tell you what happened. I made a mess. Yeah. Yeah. It failed. You know why it failed to go? Because it was the hand of man. There's a difference between the hand of man and the hand of God. Right. Praise the Lord, if you've got the hand of God working for you, what more could you want? Right. If you sit in there this evening and, and you, what you have is God's Word that He gave you. Now He gave you His Word. Maybe you don't have that yet. That you're seeking for, you're designed that, that you're searching for, that that you need, that prayer you've got before. But what you have is you have the Lord come to you and He had let you know he gave you His Word that He would do that. Right. So you're sitting there and the world said with nothing but the Word of God. <laughs> well, what more could you possibly need? Huh? Than the Word of God. Right. That God began to look at a bunch of nothing and He began to speak His Word. And from that void, light began to come. Out of that darkness, light began to shine. Pray the Lord that the plants that, that are going to eat so seeds on the earth, fully formed trees and plants, fully formed He sat upon the earth and His Word. That same Word. Come along and say, I will. You think the Lord has forgotten? I'm here to tell you, the Lord doesn't forget. Right. You'll forget, I'll forget, God won't forget. Yeah. But when He speaks it, it will be just exactly the way He said it would be. Praise the Lord. Have you easy tonight, children? Praise the Lord. Is He good? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I know what I'm reading, I'm going to share this with you. She said, Elisha, this is 8, chapter 7, King said, Elisha came to Damascus and, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And he was told him, saying, The man of God has come here. And the king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thy hand and go and meet the man of God and inquire the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? So Hazael went to meet him and took a present with him, even of every good thing, of Damascus, forty camels burdened, Cain stood before him and said, Thy son, Ben Hadad, the king of Syria, hath sent to me to thee, saying, Shall I recover this disease? And Elisha said to him, Go say to him, Thou mayest certainly recover. Howbeit the Lord hath showed me that he shall surely die. What? He said, Go and tell him thou mayest recover. The Lord has shown me that you shall surely die. Hmm? He sat on his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed of the man got wept. And Hazael said, Why weep with my Lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do to the children of Israel. Their strongholds will thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and will dash their children, and rip up their women with child. Hazael said, but, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord hath showed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. So he departed from Elisha and came to his master, who said unto him, What said Elisha to thee? He answered, He told me that thou shouldst surely recover came to pass on the morrow that he took a thick cloth and dipped it in water and spread it on his face so that he died. And Hazael reigned in his stead. The Lord said, Thou mayest, tell him that he may. In other words, that if it was just this sickness, you'd recover. But you're going to die. And he began to tell, the prophet began to tell that man what all he was going to do and he even responded saying, Am I a dog? What kind of... Rotten dog am I that I would do these things you're saying? And he said, The Lord showed it to me. The Lord spoke it to me. Yeah. When the Lord speaks something, yeah. it's going to be exactly yeah. the way he said. Yeah. 
So that king, Ben Hadad, would have lived. He might, he might could have lived if, but see, the Lord knows the intents of a man's heart. And there are things that the Lord would allow, but we get in the way. Man intervenes and gets in the way. The same thing that happens oftentimes when we become frustrated and we try to work out things ourselves, we get in the way. We may have that that we ask of the Lord. But then we have a tendency to do things our own way and fear. And we get done. What happens? When the Lord speaks something, if He made you a promise, it will be that way. If He, if he spoke to you and said, Your loved one will pray, somewhere, they will pray. If it's on their deathbed, and I don't recommend a deathbed repentance, it can't be close. I'm not saying it can't work, but I don't recommend it. But if that is what it takes, the word of the Lord will come to be. Praise the Lord. Take it easy tonight, church. Hey, the Lord be good to us. Praise the Lord. Is God great to you? Yeah. What did He told you that He would do for you? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Gabby, do you still have that little mustard seed somewhere? Hmm? What had happened just in y'all's life since you grabbed and held on? It, not the little seed, but it was the faith in holding on to it. The faith in the symbol of the promise of God. Has God worked? Has God done? Have you said back God? As I told you, I said you can sit back when it's over. You'll look and you'll see how God, step by step by step, has worked it out. Have you seen the hand of God begin to move and work for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm asking somebody from experience this evening. Why? Because there's others that seated here that they're not at that point of victory where you're at. They're not standing out there at the threshold but actually holding that promise in their hands. But they need to hear from somebody that has been where they're at that can say, I trusted in the Lord and He supplied my needs. Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We come out too many times. We do it wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he didn't move on me to praise him just now. But I praise him anyway. Whatever he tells you, did whatever the Lord tells you. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to say so, but but if Patsy G had ever been moved off the come and prophesied to you and make you a promise, and she's been gone. For a while now. But that word that she spoke is the promise of God, and it will be exactly the way God said that it would be. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now, how good is your God, children? How great is it? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. And their sickness, they're too sick, in too bad a shape. The doctors have said there's nothing else they can do. They, they're going to die. Do you know how many times I've heard doctors say that? Yeah. And you know how people get better. Yeah. You know why? They don't have the power over life and death. They can't uh, heal anybody. They can treat. And I'm not with them. They can treat, yeah. but they can't heal anybody. Yeah. But God is the one that speaks life in the morning. God is the one that speaks blessing to you. Praise the Lord. How many of you have ever been in a place? The Lord has made you a promise. And then here comes that enemy and he starts working on it. Oh, yeah. Now he begins to try your faith. Yeah. See whether or not you really trust the Lord. Right. Because when things begin to go a little sideways, we say, they begin to look like they go wrong. If we trust the Lord, we leave it in the Lord's hand. But if we don't trust the Lord, guess what we do? We grab hold of it. Yeah. Because we feel like it's going the wrong way. But the Lord... Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If he needed to, he pulled the sun back on you. That's what he needed to do. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. If he needed to, he'd speak 
He said, if I was in the air and bring you something to eat, that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do. Praise the Lord. If he needed to, but he'd just take and he'd, he'd lay that man down on the earth and there it would be for him. If that's what he needed to do. There is not anything, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Now, I don't know why uh, necessarily that we kind of had a little bit of a hold back this evening. But are you excited about the Lord? Amen. Are you, do you still love serving God? Amen. The God that will take that very thing that the enemy manufactures to work against you. And he will get in the middle of it and turn it around right back on you. <laughs> the one, the same God that will take that snare that the enemy laid out for you and he'll turn it back on you. Glory to God. I'm glad we serve you, see. I'm yeah. glad we one of you. Look up, church. Ask yourself, I want you to think about whatever's going on in your life. Think about the problem that you face. And that's what it is. Sometimes it's not necessarily what we're going through right now, but the enemy will find us over what may be tomorrow. Yeah. Is there anything you can think of tomorrow that's too hard for the Lord to have? No. Not a thing. Not a thing. I love the Lord. You preach your God, man. All is always open. Never closes.
Thank you. 